You see, us human beings love expressing ourselves. Any way that we can show some degree of individualism or personality through everyday things, we typically take it, whether it's your clothing, your makeup, your car, or things like that. But today I'm gonna to be talking about a kind of unique, maybe sometimes completely ridiculous, and other times very controversial way that we do so. And that's in the form of personalized or vanity license plates. So let's just start with a simple history. Well, license plates in general started in the United States in 1901 when New York State required their drivers make their own license plate in order to be registered. It consisted of just their initials, but could be made from a variety of different materials, porcelain, leather, or wood, but all came with certain downsides such as tarnishing or breaking, or simply having to paint one's initials directly on your vehicle, which not everybody wanted to do. But this eventually led to a problem that you could have probably guessed from the beginning. A lot of people happen to have the same initials. So this led to eventually state issued license plates. And that would happen in 1910, where Massachusetts would be the first state to do so. In 1921, West Virginia would be the first metal stamped license plate issued by the state. But the first customizable license plate would be Pennsylvania in 1931, allowed the inclusion of one's initials in your license plate for a small fee. But that's all there was. And this would continue up until 1957, where the United States would actually standardize the size and shape of license plates, because before that, it could be kind of all over the place. But vanity plates would have their day come 1965, which is when states would start allowing, again for a fee, the customization of one's license plate using letters or numbers, usually limited to eight characters most of the time. So some of you may be asking, why? Why did states decide to allow this to take place? Well, it was an additional revenue source as the licensing board didn't really have very many uh, incomes. So the issuing of personalized plates allowed them to make some extra money. But there were some rules. Each state has a list or guidelines that are not allowed for a personalized license plate. That could be certain words, controversies, offensive things, discriminatory things, and certain topics or phrases. Jurisdictions can reject outright requests for certain vanity plates or can actually recall vanity plates that had been in circulation for some time if then deemed inappropriate. An example is in New York State, you can't have NYPD on your vanity plate. You know, standing for New York Police Department, it could be misleading or, you know, you simply just don't want to give people an opportunity to talk negatively about your state's police department. Another example is that the F word can't be featured loud and proud on your plate as well. Although this is true for every state except for one currently, and that is the state of Maine. Just a heads up, we will be talking about some of these more inappropriate license plates or controversial license plates later in this video. So just keep that in mind. As of today, every Canadian province and every United States state allows vanity plates except for the Canadian province of Newfoundland and Labrador. I'd like to hear the reasoning behind that. That's probably interesting. And there are actually some special customized plates as well, including some jurisdictions have special colors, special backgrounds or designs. There are many customized plates that are used for commemorative or charitable purposes. Florida is a specific example that uses a lot of these. For instance, they had a customized plate that could use to commemorate the Challenger disaster. There are special classes of customized license plate, including those for Medal of Honor recipients, Purple Heart recipients, radio host call signs are included in this. There are certain customized license plates that are actually enforced for legal purposes. For instance, in the states of Ohio, Georgia, and Minnesota, just to name a few, one can actually be enforced to have a certain license plate if you were convicted of a driving while intoxicated charge. Interestingly, in New Jersey, if you were convicted of a DUI, you're not allowed to have a customized license plate, although that doesn't seem to be 100% concrete. So how many people actually have vanity plates? Well, it's hard to tell post-2007. As 2007, there was a study done to see how many people actually had vanity plates, and it was discovered that of the American population's registered vehicles, 3.83% of them had customized license plates, which would total 9.7 million. 
As for Canada, this was 2.94%. Interestingly, the state of Virginia has one of the highest percentages of people with customized plates, and I discovered that it's about $10 to do it there, or at least it was relatively recently, so maybe that has something to do with it. But the percentage of customized plates for, per registered vehicles in Virginia is 16.19%. That's quite a high number. The lowest state, at least at the time of the study, was the state of Texas, where I'm at right now, at 0.5% of registered vehicles. Hilariously, in 1987, Canada would have a game show called Bumper Stumpers, which featured people trying to discern what a customized license plate was supposed to mean. Apparently it went for three seasons, although I've never seen it, I now do want to. But with all these customized plates, it did not take long for issues to arise in allowing the customization and things that were simply involving victims of circumstance. Let's talk about those first. Two of the problems that popped up were people who chose the license plate null and another person who chose the license plate no plate. No plate is a pretty funny example as it was given to a Robert G. Barbour who had three options to choose for his vanity plate. You know, the first one he chose boating, the second one he chose sailing, and he didn't actually want a third option. So instead of leaving the third blank blank, he decided to write in no plate to signify that he did not want a third option. But of course, you know, being the situation that it is, he received a license plate that said no plate. It's funny, but it actually became a serious problem because the Los Angeles Police Department wrote down no plate in their ticketing forms when someone lacked a license plate when pulled over. So when entering it into the system, and although it wasn't necessarily a computerized system at the time, you were entering in no plate received a ticket, and there was somebody who had a license plate of no plate. Apparently he received so many tickets over the years accumulating over 2,500 of them that he began writing and sending form letters whenever he received one to clarify what the issue was. And it eventually led the LAPD to write none instead of no plate on their form to uh, leave poor Robert alone in this whole mess. The holder of the license plate null had a similar issue as this other jurisdiction had null for the lack of a license plate as well. A similar issue, but a little bit more strange, was NV. Another Californian example, Nick Vautier purchased the license plate customized to have his initials, NV. And you know, he thought it would end there, but NV was the shorthand used by police departments in his jurisdiction for not visible. So if they were not able to see a license plate, they would put in NV on their forms, and those forms were computerized, so they would begin to be put under Nick Vautier's name. So those are some of the victims of circumstance examples, which I think are pretty interesting. But you know, customized license plates have oftentimes just simply become a status symbol. An example of which in its best form would be the example of the most expensive customized license plate ever sold, which was the equivalent of 14 million US dollars. And it was for the license plate of number one. Saeed Khoury, a wealthy individual from Abu Dhabi purchased this license plate from a charity auction for $14 million. It makes me feel better that it was for a charity. When asked for his motivation, Saeed said the following, quote, I bought it because it's the best number. I bought it because I want to be the best in the world, end quote. So if you are wondering what it takes to become number one, it is $14 million. Now, Saeed actually did say that he was willing to spend up to the equivalent of 27 million US dollars for this number, but you know, he stopped at 14. In other places like Rhode Island, Illinois, Massachusetts, Washington DC, license plates that are shorter or have a smaller serial number are considered status symbols. Some governor offices actually had to set up lotteries to issue these as they were in such high demand and they are very popular among politicians, I don't think that should surprise anybody. Other examples of controversies or problems associated with vanity or customized plates are censorship. Like I said before, each state has a system to censor inappropriate content from being put on a license plate, but there isn't an exact form. There are lists of banned words, some of them for practical purposes, some of them because of censorship rules that are not allowed on license plates, but there are also a lot of, you know, let's just say vagueness to the rules. For instance, after many years of having it, in 2001, Paula Perry had her license plate SHT 
HPNS recalled for inappropriate nature. She had already had it for many years, but at this point it was being recalled. Of course, standing for <laughs> happens. But she said it was part of her philosophy that signified the way she looked at certain problems in life. That being said, the court ruled against her. Another example of a censorship type rule was Wendy Auger, an owner of a Toyota RAV4, her license plate read PB4 WEGO, standing for P before we go. This is a common request of parents for their children when they're going on a longer trip. Please use the restroom before we leave so we don't have to stop. She received a letter requesting her to return the license plate within 10 days or have her registration revoked. Sexual or excretory acts or functions was the reason cited for the recall. Luckily, her, a friend of her friend was the governor of Rhode Island, Governor Chris Sununu. He actually called her and told her that he'd take care of it for her after a fuss was raised. Well, it must be said that some of the censorship rules were extremely arbitrary and subjective. Here's a good example. In March of 2020 of this year, the license plate FKGAS was banned and ruled as not allowed to be used. But it was found that the following license plates were currently in use in the same state. FCC ING, FKN FAST, and other similar ones of sort of the same nature. So why was this one banned and the other ones were not? Another example is another Californian case from 2019 where University of Southern California's professor, Jonathan Kotler, had his request for a vanity plate denied. It was C-O-Y-W, and that stood for Come On You Whites. Now what that actually is signifying is it's a slogan and a cheer for the Fulham Football Club in the British Premier League. As an extreme fan of this soccer club, Kotler was extremely disappointed that he couldn't rep his team slogan, especially after their 2017 to 2018 season where they were promoted to a higher league. It was denied citing, quote, carries connotations offensive to good taste and decency, end quote. And also it was later cited to be potentially racist towards Caucasian people. You can see why people would take this very personally. As someone who cares very, very deeply about a sports team, saying that the cheer for your favorite sports team is offensive would be, you know, offensive to that person. And unfortunately for Kotler, there was precedent in this case for potentially deeming license plates as a place worthy of censorship. In 1973, Katsu versus Department of Motor Vehicles ruled against keeping the license plate customized to say EZ LAY. After trying to get the case thrown out of court, the state settled and allowed Kotler to keep his customized license plate and issued it to him. See, there was also a United States Supreme Court case that dealt with customized license plates. Walker versus Texas Division, Sons of Confederate Veterans and Company, was the case, and the Supreme Court ruled five to four that a Texas Department of Motor Vehicles could deny a specialty license plate requested by the Sons of Confederate Veterans. So those are some examples where censorship took place in regards to customized license plates, many of which dealing with people's own identity that they're attempting to show through their customized plate. But I think the best example of that taking place has to do in 2017 with Mr. Lauren Grabher. Lauren Grabher is a resident of Nova Scotia, and for the previous 27 years at that point, he had a customized license plate that had his last name, one of Austro-German descent, on his license plate. G-R-A-B-H-E-R. -E now, if many of us remember, in 2017, President Donald Trump was recorded in saying a line that had to do with grabbing women by their genitalia. And it started with grab her. So somebody anonymously called in and complained about Mr. Grab Her's license plate. Now this is very difficult because he had had it for almost three decades. It is literally his last name but due to a current event in the neighboring country of the United States of America, it had now become culturally inappropriate to have that on his license plate. In a question of one's own identity, it is literally his identity, it's his name. So it's really interesting that this individual's own name was deemed as inappropriate given the circumstances of the cultural times. Other people who are strong free speech advocates like what's taking place in Maine really push for no censorship to take place at all. As for Mr. Grabher, he lost his case initially, but is currently in the appeals process.
The fact of the matter is, if there is to be some sort of censorship at all, it needs to sort of evolve and grow with the times. For instance, Grab Her wasn't considered even controversial for a very, very long time, until it was. And let's not degrade how creative people can be when choosing something that they're trying to get away with. A good example is 3MTA3, which is a reference to a Beastie Boys album. Other examples have to do with current internet slang and sexual connotation, which tends to change and evolve all the time. Drug references, gang references tend to always keep evolving and changing. And then there are people like my good friends who customize their license plates simply to make them very difficult to read, whether they're a series of ones and I's or a series of B's and eights. In fact, one of these friends actually was pulled over by a police officer simply to see what his license plate actually said. So censorship must be vague and it must be difficult for those who do it, especially when there are people who will push back so strongly. But then there are times when license plate popped up as inappropriate without even really knowing any better. Like for instance, this license plate, which looks like an inappropriate term for someone's behind and an inappropriate term for a group fornication, actually was state issued. This was not a vanity plate at all. This is a completely normal standard issued license plate. So, you know, Murphy's Law, the butterfly effect, whatever you wanna call it, goofy stuff happens. So that brings us to an end of the journey about vanity and customized license plates. My name is Mitchell. I'm here at Fred Has Toyota Country, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.